a protocol analyzer is an incredibly powerful troubleshooting tool. The basic functionality of a protocol analyzer is to gather packets directly from the network and present them to you for analysis. One of the ways you can do this is by using an application like Wireshark. It's an open source protocol analyzer, and you can find that at Wireshark.org. You can download it and immediately start using the powerful features that are included inside of the application. These are not the easiest tools to be able to use. They take a bit of training and a bit of getting used to exactly how to operate and understand what you're seeing. But ultimately, they become one of the most powerful tools you have because what's inside of the packets is exactly what's going over the network. You'll know exactly the truth of what's happening because you'll see every one and every zero that is sent across the network. To be able to use a protocol analyzer, you first have to have a way to connect to the data. So you'll need some type of tap. You'll need perhaps a hub if you're in a 10 or 100 megabit Ethernet connection. Maybe it's a tap that's specifically designed to plug into your connections. Maybe it's a fiber tap like the one that's listed here. Or maybe you're using the capabilities that are built into your switch to do a port mirror or port redirection. Some manufacturers call that a switched port analyzer or a span. However you do it, get the data to your analysis device and then begin capturing as much information as possible. You can always filter out information later on, but you don't want to miss anything when you're doing the actual capture. So one good best practice is to capture everything wide open and later on you can pull out the pieces that you need. When you are in the capture environment, you're working with these applications, it's also good to document what you're doing and the time that you're doing it. If you're trying to troubleshoot the way an application works, you might have someone log into the application and make some notes about what you're seeing on the screen and how long it seemed to take for the end user to perform that particular function. Then have them perform the next function of the application and document that process as well. Ultimately, you're going to be capturing all of this data, and the truth of what's going on is inside of that data. If you aren't exactly certain of what you're seeing in the packets, it's very easy to take that packet capture file, send it to someone else, and get a second opinion of what they're seeing with the conversation conversations that are going back and forth between the two devices. Here's an example of what you might see inside of Wireshark. This is a sample trace file that I got from the Wireshark wiki that simply shows some web communication, some HTTP communication. Each one of the lines on the top of the screen is a single packet that's gone back and forth over the network. You can see the size of the packet, the source IP address, the destination IP address, and then a summary of what's inside the packet. In the middle window is more detail about what's inside of the packet. You can see the frame information. You can see what type of information information at the layer 2 or the OSI Mac layer of what's going on. You can see the IP information, the IP version number, header length, your diff fields, your length identification and any flags that might be inside of it. And if you want to see what is exactly inside of the TCP packet itself, you can see the port numbers that are being used inside of those. At the bottom of the screen is a hexadecimal and an ASCII representation of what you happen to be looking at in each individual packet. And as you go from one frame to the other, you can start to follow the conversation and understand exactly what's going back and forth. And the summaries you get might help you along as well. You can see the command git slash download download.html using HTTP version 1.1. Of course, across the network, what you saw is all of these ones and zeros represented in hexadecimal going by. But if you look at the ASCII representation, you can start to see the actual words that are coming out of that. And usually, you'll be able to see those when you scroll through and look at exactly what's there in the beginning part of the detail. Once you start working with protocol analysis tools, you do a lot of captures, you start understanding what's going on, this can be an exceptional way for troubleshooting some of those very hard to understand application problems.